was a young man, I came across a statistic that you've seen. It said that the average person only uses about 10% of their potential, and the other 90% is left unused throughout their lifetime. Well, recent research shows that that statistic is not true. The average person only uses about 2% of their potential, and the other 98% is stored like treasure buried in the ground, and it's never used. And what do people use their 2% for? Well, they use it mostly for conversation at work and with their friends. They use it for messaging and tweeting. They use it for watching television. Average person watches a screen, a screen, five, three to five hours per day is they're watching a screen of some kind, whether it's a computer or an iPhone or an iPad or a television. And most of what they're watching is in category two. It's completely irrelevant and unimportant. It makes no difference in their lives at all. But whatever you do over and over again becomes a habit. So today we have an entire generation of people who have the habit of watching screens all the time. And as a result, their lives go very, very slowly. So therefore, after you have to ask yourself, is this a good use of my time? Is this, does, this, does this work have tremendous consequences for me? So when I came to studying thinking, I said, what is the activity that has the greatest potential consequences for you in your life? And the answer is thinking, because the quality of your thinking determines the quality of your actions. The quality of your actions determines the quality of your results. And in life, everything and its results. Now, whatever age you're at, if you look at other people who are successful, there's one quality that successful people have, and that's that they get a lot of results. They are known by everybody as the people who get the most results. They're extremely result-oriented. They think about results all the time. What is the characteristic of unhappy and unsuccessful people? Is they waste most of their time. What do people at work waste most of their time in? They waste it talking to their friends. When they go to work in the morning, they don't go to work, they go and find somebody to talk to. And it's sort of like ducks in the farmyard. Quack, 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 quack. If you go into any business office, everybody's going quack, 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 quack. And then it's lunchtime, so they all go out. Quack, 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 quack. And they all come back. Quack, 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 quack. And nobody does any work. Everybody is quack, quack, quacking, and then they come in, they check their email, and they check their Facebook, and then they go and some quack, quack, and have some coffee, and then they go home. I have noticed that the work week, in, the work day in Russia is from about 8 o'clock in the morning until about 5 o'clock at night. However, when I drive in the traffic, by 3.30 in the afternoon, the roads are full of cars. Why is that? Because everybody who gets off work at 5 o'clock is actually going home early so they can watch television. And they're going home early so that they can get ahead of the traffic. Quack, 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 quack. So most, most time at work is wasted. So I'll give you another technique to transform your life. It's when you go to work, work all the time. When you go to work, when you start first thing in the morning, just work all day. And don't do anything but your work. If somebody wants to talk to you, quack, 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 you say, yes, but not now. Let's talk after work. Or let's talk on the weekend. But right now, I have to do my work. And eventually, people will stop talking to you. And they'll go and talk to other people and quack, 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 quack. And you will accomplish two or three times as much each day if you just go to work and start work and work all day long. If you just develop the habit of working all day, you will produce twice as much, you'll be paid twice as much, you'll be promoted twice as fast. And this is true all over the world, no matter what the situation. By the way, I said that this is a great time of opportunity in Russia. Do you know that most of the most successful businesses have, were started at the bottom of a recession? Most of the most successful careers, including mine, were started at the bottom of a recession? That what happens in a recession is that you are forced to think much better than before. You're forced to make much better decisions. You're forced to make much better actions. You're forced to focus more intently on the activities that have the greatest consequences. And as a result, times of great difficulty are also times of great opportunity for you and for me. Because you can grow faster and become stronger 
today than has ever been possible perhaps in your lifetime. So don't complain about the difficulties of today because first of all, we can't do anything about it. And second of all, look into them for the advantages or benefits that they might have for you for the future. Now, here's a second question for you. And I ask this question all the time because when I first heard it, I didn't know the answer. The answer is, the question is, what is your most valuable financial asset? And when I first heard that, I thought, well, maybe it's my house or my car or my bank account. No, your most valuable financial asset is your earning ability. It's your ability to earn money. Your earning ability is like an oil well that just keeps gushing oil. Is you can lose everything in your world. All back again. So your earning ability is the most powerful and most valuable financial asset you have. And your earning ability, by definition, is your ability to get results that people will pay you for. Now, this doesn't mean that you are not a valuable person. Each human being is of incredible value. But some people's earning ability is much higher than others. And your earning ability is an asset so it can be either increasing in value or decreasing in value. Now here's what they study, here's what they found in the studies. The 80-20 rule. They found that the bottom 80% of people, the ones who struggle for money and worry about money all their lives, these people, when they take their first job, will work to a certain level and then they will level off and never improve for the rest of their lives, unless they're forced to. And so therefore, 10 years after starting work, the average person today is no more productive at getting results than they were after one year. But they find that the people in the top 20% are very different. The people in the bottom 80% increase their income about two or 3% per year over the years. People in the top 20% increase their income at an average of about 11% per year. If your income goes up 11% per year, you will double your income every six or seven years. And then you will double it again, and then you will double it again, and soon you live in a beautiful house, and you drive a nice car, and you'll send your children to private schools, and you'll have a nice bank account, and you'll be happy. But if you don't keep increasing your income, nothing good will happen. Now, what is the difference? The answer is the people in the bottom 80% don't learn anymore after they leave school. But the people in the top 20% are always learning new things. And as a result, they are increasing their earning ability. Now, one of my favorite statistics is the measurement of the highest paid people in America. And by the way, these statistics are true in almost every country. They looked at the 500 top executives of the 500 biggest companies. And every year they do this calculation. They find that last year, the average person earns about $10 million. Now, this person started off at the beginning, at their first job, with no earning ability, no ability to get results at all. And then somehow today, their companies are willingly paying them $10 million to come to work. What has happened? Well, the average top executive earns $200 and 57 times the average pay of the person in their company. 257 times. We're not talking about twice as much or three times as much. We're talking about 257 times. Some top executives earn 300 and 400 times the amount paid to the average person in their company. How can this happen? Well, here's what they discovered. Every year, and many people here are in this situation, every year about one and one half percent of the population starts work for the first time. They take their first job as adults. And so it's like a big marathon, it's a big race, and everyone lines up, and then the gun goes off, bang, and everybody starts to run. And then, just like a marathon, some people get way ahead, in this case, in the earnings race. The great majority stay in the middle, and some people fall well behind. So they just finished a 25-year study, which I think is one of the great studies on success that's ever been done. They asked, how is it that these people can be earning so much money in paycheck? They're, they're receiving 
a pay of almost a million dollars a month for going to work. And if they lost their job for any reason, another company would hire them immediately and pay them $10 million a year. How can this happen? So the researchers at a major university went back and they said, well, these people must be very intelligent. They must be, have special gifts. They must have special qualities or talents that could enable them to be so successful in life. So they went back and looked at their school records and the records at their first job and their second job. And you know what they found? These people were just average. Even when they started off their work life, they didn't look any different from anyone else. They were just average. But then they all started to practice a single strategy. And this is the strategy that will change your life and your career forever. And it's so simple, it's, you can't believe it. When these people took their first job, the first thing they would do is they would go to their boss and they would say, boss, I want to make a valuable contribution in this work and I want to be successful in this company. What one skill would help me the most to be more successful, to make a more valuable contribution? And the boss would say, well, if you were very good at this, negotiating or team building or selling or reading financial statements, if you were really good at this, then you would be much more valuable than an average person. So they would say, okay, and they would write down the development of that skill as a goal, just like a, a lesson plan for a subject in school. If you say you wanted to be a doctor or an engineer, they would tell you the courses that you would have to take to get that degree. So in this case, they would decide, all right, I would need to read these books. And they would ask, what are the best books on this skill? And they would write it down. And then they would ask, what are the best audio programs to listen to for this skill? Preferably Brian Tracy audio programs, they're the best. Uh, and third of all, what courses and seminars should I attend in order to develop this skill? And finally, what can I do every day to develop this skill? How can I take action? And they would go to work, and they would work on this one skill. Like a sniper rather than a machine gunner, they would work on a single skill. And it might take them a month, and it might take them three months, and it might take them a year, but they would work every day on that skill. And here's the magic number. The magic number was two hours per day, five days per week. Ten hours in all. Two hours per day of personal study on a single skill, five days per week. Now, here in Moscow, how many total hours are there in a week? No, how many total hours? Total hours are there in a week. That's 24 hours per day times seven. You can use a calculator if you like, or you can ask your friend. And the answer is 168 hours. I know this was very difficult for university students to figure out, all right, how many hours in a week. But that's where we start. So there's 168 hours in a week, everywhere. Now, what we're saying is that if you want to go to the top of your field and be one of the highest paid and most successful people in life, take 10 of those hours and invest them in yourself. That's all. And this turned out to be the strategy practiced by all the top people. I have worked with the presidents of some of the biggest companies in the world, and they spend two to three hours each week reading and upgrading their skills. Do you know who the third richest man in the world is? It's a man named Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett worked delivering newspapers when he was 14 and 15 years old. He would get up at five o'clock in the morning, and when it was dark and everyone was sleeping, he would deliver newspapers, and he did this for more than two years. He delivered 200,000 newspapers over that time, and he earned one centi, one kopeck, if you like, today, one ruble per newspaper, and he saved the money, and he grew $2,000, and that $2,000 was his first investment, and he made that investment after careful study, and the investment grew, and so he invested more money, and that investment grew. Last year, his total investments are worth $350 billion. 
third or fourth largest single company in the United States, one of the biggest companies in the world. Last year, his profits were $25 billion. By the way, $25 billion is good. That's a good amount for one person to grow a company that generates $25 billion in profits. And Warren Buffett has the same schedule almost every day. And what he does is he comes to work and he spends 80% of his time studying and reading in the subjects relative to his business. Only 20% is in meetings or phone calls or anything else. He spends 80% of his time learning new things so he can make better decisions and get better results. So a question I sometimes ask adults, how many hours a week do you spend studying new subjects to help increase your productivity and your value? So they found that these, ex these experts, these, these, these highly paid people, uh, looked upon earning ability like a ladder. And a ladder has steps, and each step is a skill. And when you learn a new skill, you increase your earning ability. Also, you increase your ability to use your other skills. And each time you learn a new skill, your, in, your earning ability goes up. And when you learn a new skill, your earning ability goes up. And each new skill you learn causes you to become more and more valuable, and people will pay you more and more money for the results that you can get for them. Now, if at any given time you decide to stop climbing the ladder of success, you will level off, like most people do, 80%, but then you will begin to decline because the, whatever skills you have are becoming obsolete at a rapid rate. And they're becoming obsolete faster today than ever before. So if you are not constantly moving up the ladder, you're actually moving down the ladder. And people don't understand why their income is not going up. It's because they are not becoming more productive. They are not learning new skills. They're not working on themselves to become more successful. So, increasing your earning ability is the strategy used by the highest paid people in the world today. Every week they spend 10 hours or more studying new skill, the one skill that can help them the most, and they keep climbing that ladder. And it just becomes a habit. A part of their life is learning, just like a part of your life may be watching television or playing sports or something else. A part of their life is learning all the time. In fact, in some of my seminars, I say, here's a question for you. What are you learning today? Right? In other words, what is the subject that you are working on today? And what you should do is you should ask people at the break, say, what is, what is your subject today? What are you working on? What are, what are you learning about today? And everybody should have an answer. Well, today I'm working on strategy. Today I'm working on sales. Today I'm working on presentations. Today I'm working on team building. Everybody should be working on developing a new skill. A friend of mine wrote a best-selling book a couple of years ago, and basically what it said is whatever got you to where you are today is not enough to keep you there. Today, to go any further, you must develop new skills and new skills. How long does this go on? All your life. For the rest of your life, when you're surrounded by rapid changes in information and technology and competition and government policies, as long as there is rapid change going on outside of you, there must be rapid change and even faster change going on inside of you if you want to be successful. So the top people are the ones who keep learning new skills all the time. Now, I was reading something in philosophy a couple of years ago, and it said there are only certain things that a person can do for themselves. A person can only breathe for themselves. A person can only eat for themselves. A person can only drink for themselves. A person can only learn for themselves. So only the one thing or one thing that only you can do is to learn. No one else can do it for you. No one else can give it to you. Only you can learn new things through hard work. And when I discovered the idea of continuous learning, I thought it was like a miracle. I came from a poor home. We never had any money. When I left school, I did not graduate. My first job was washing dishes in the back of a small hotel. And when I lost that job, I got a job washing cars 
in the wintertime. You know what that's like. When I lost that job, I got a job washing floors with a janitorial service. And I thought washing was in my future. My wife was always giving me things to wash because she says she doesn't want me to lose my skill. So I traveled and I worked on farms. I worked in construction. I worked at laboring jobs. I worked uh, uh, digging wells. I worked in, in factories, st stacking lumber. I worked on a ship in the North Atlantic. I worked at laboring jobs until I was 23 years old. And when I could no longer get a laboring job, like many people here, I got a job in sales. And in sales, I was a complete failure because I had no training. So for six months, I worked and worked and worked, and I'm making no success at all. I say starting off in sales with no skills is a wonderful weight loss program because if you don't sell, you don't eat. And I lost a lot of weight in that six months. And so finally, I did something that changed my life. I went to the top man in our company who was a little bit older than me, but he was earning 10 times as much as I was. And I asked him, why are you so successful? Why, why are you earning so much money? And he said, well, show me your sales system, your sales process, and I will give you feedback on it. I said, well, I don't have a sales system. I just knock on doors and talk to people until they tell me that they're not interested. And then I go and do it again and again. And I was getting up at six or seven in the morning. I was knocking on doors from eight o'clock in the morning when people came to work, and I would work all day. And then I would go out and knock on the doors of apartments and homes. And I was working 12, sometimes 14 hours a day. And sometimes I would work 12 hours and not make one sale. And it was a small sale. So he said, no, no, no. He said, that's not the way you sell. He said, the way you sell is by asking questions and then looking for ways to help your customers achieve their goals with our products. And so I went out and I started to ask questions rather than talking. And people started to respond to me differently. And then I began to read books on selling. And then I began to listen to audio programs on selling. And then I began to go to seminars on selling. And every time I learned something new, my sales went up and up and up. Within one year, I was earning 10 times as much. I was earning more at the age of 25 than I ever dreamed I would ever earn in my life. I was earning more than my father had earned after 40 years of hard work. I couldn't believe it. What I learned was this, is that every single field has success formulas. It has recipes that you can follow. And that if you do what other successful people do, you finally get the same results that they do. So for the rest of my life, whenever I got into another business, and I've been in 22 different businesses, I would sit down and study. I say, what is the success formula in this business? How do people succeed? What do the top 20% of companies and the top 20% of individuals do? And then I would do that. And I would soon get the same results. And people say, how can you be so successful? You've never been in this business before. I said, I just read the books. I just talked to the top people and they told me what to do.